What's up YouTube and welcome to the SQL Server tutorial series and almost a year have passed since I uploaded the last video but now I have decided to complete this series with amazing videos and we will start from exactly where we left it. So let us begin. Let me connect to the database. Now we already know that what are functions. The main difference between functions and procedure is uh, in procedure you can perform DML operations like insert, update and delete. So in a function you can basically just uh, select a value or select a table but inside a procedure you can do all sort of things like manipulating the database and getting a result at the end if you want. So basically a procedure is so a procedure is more like a function in uh, C sharp Java or other programming languages. So now let us see an easy example then move on to the more complex one. So to create a procedure we write create proc the name of the procedure which will be greetings as begin to begin the procedure and end then we write the procedure which will just say then to call a procedure we write execute and the name of the procedure so greetings so first I have to choose the database let's choose the testing database execute let us call the function so it is showing me hello how are you so now we can look at an example of a proc with input parameters and we have to terminate the badge with a go statement we can now put an input parameter at name and we will also have to define the data type of the parameter now we can concatenate the strings so now if I call the greetings to function then I have to provide the parameter and there are two ways to provide the parameter the first one is I say it like this name equals to Raza so when I create this procedure then execute so it will say uh, I forgot to put a space here if I have to uh, create a procedure again I have to use the word alter so it's saying hello Raza how are you you can also put the parameters uh, in brackets like we do in the programming languages they are optional the parameters in procedures are usually wrote on the next line now this time uh, we are creating a procedure with input parameters and a return value so the name of the function will be sum of two a number another number and it will return the result so return num plus num2 so now I can call the sum of 2 and pass 5 and 10 I can declare a variable result which would be int 
and then I will execute the sum of two and get the result into my rest variable. Now when I execute, I still haven't print the result. So print the result. Now when I execute these three statements together, I see 15 on my console. So if I change number, it shows me the correct result. Now let me try to make a, a similar function, but this time we will return a string. So no numbers. We are just trying to return a string. Now let me run this procedure. And then let's try to run this. You will see that conversion failed when converting the varchar value to the data int. But we haven't used integer anywhere. This is because the return keyword in the procedure only returns an integer value. So it's trying to convert the hello world into a integer to return it, but it fails to do so. So basically this is the drawback of procedure that you cannot return a string or any other data type than integer. So let us move on to the uh, next type of procedure. I will copy the above procedure and make some changes. This time we are dealing with a procedure with input and output parameter. So now we are dealing with the output parameter. So, so now we also have the result which is a varchar 50. Now we are not returning the sum of the variables but we will output this parameter and now we will just set this variable. So set the result equals to the concatenation of so I am just setting the result variable I am not returning anything let me create this procedure and to use this procedure I have to make this rest variable of the same type the character quantity can be different but it is not recommended so now we write the execute statement as the name of the procedure followed by the variables which are the first number will be 10 and the second number will be 20 the third parameter is the output parameter so I will define the variable name over here which is res and then the output keyword. It is sometimes hard to remember but it's like this. So the name of the variable where you want to receive the result and then the output keyword. So combine all of these and you get this entire string containing the sum of the two numbers so this is how you can return a string from a procedure now that we have seen all the different things that we can do with a procedure now let us move on to a more practical example that can help you in real life problems so i am creating a new query and i need these three tables so the first is a customer table which only uh, has a, has the customer name. The second table also depends on the customer table because it has a foreign key of customer ID. So uh, this denotes that the address belongs to which customer and the phone number is also similar. It also depends upon the customer ID to know that uh, what phone number belongs to which customer. 
now what we have to do is we have to write a procedure which creates a customer with its address and its phone numbers so all in one go so i'm gonna write the go statement and and then create a procedure this time with with its full abbreviation and uh, let uh, let me use the custom that is used in, in the procedure so we write proc and then the actual procedure name so insert customer as begin and this customer parameter will take so all of these parameters so now let me write the insert statements insert into customer table values only name will go inside this table but we have a problem we need the uh, customer id in the next two tables so we have to get the customer id what we can do is we can declare a customer id variable and then use the scope identity function which is a built-in sql function which returns the last identity value that was inserted into an identity column in the same scope so this is called a same scope as begin and end this is called a scope so it will return whatever identity is inserted in this scope so now we have the customer table and we can insert the other values as well so this is how we are inserting uh, the entire customer uh, data in one go and it's easy for the end user to execute this procedure instead of writing the entire query just call the procedure by writing execute and the procedure name and then providing the parameters so first is the name let's say amazing the second one is city so my city karachi then the area code the street name muslim town and then the phone numbers so now I can insert this data. Oh, I have not created the procedure yet. And then I have to write the select statement. For all the tables. So you can see that we created a customer with a name then added the id of the customer with with the other information his address to another table with the same customer id we added these three phone numbers just with with this one procedure execution so it makes the uh, job of a backend developer real easy and he does not have to take care of the insertion logic and he just sends the data and the sql takes care of rest of the process so it's really convenient and it's really powerful so this is all for the video thanks for watching and do subscribe to the channel see you next time